Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. It's all about critical thinking for success, and we are with the CEO and founder, Bob Kaufman. Welcome back today. How are you? I'm great. How about you? I'm doing well. Fantastic conversation. The last time we spoke about children, and today I know you have some more tricks up your sleeve, and we're going to talk a little more about business, right? Uh, right. Great. Uh, I do a lot of consulting around business to help people um, be more successful there. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of common areas where there are breakdowns in business. And uh, so, and I, I work with entrepreneurs who are starting businesses or have small businesses going and then much larger ones. Um, so, one of the things, so many people are in small businesses, and so I, I'll start sort of start there because there's a lot of common things that people occur. Some people, when they get started, if they're starting a partnership, if they're having somebody who's a partner, they say that the first, the the ship that goes down the first is partnership, <laughs> <laughs> and. Some of the reasons for that is people get in and they don't really talk about, talk through their expectations and how, how are they going to really be in good partners with each other. And oftentimes people are uncomfortable to bring up uncomfortable topics, you know, like what are we each going to make in this? What are we going to be doing? Um, how do we get compensated and so forth? And so that is crucial conversations that people need to have when they're starting a business, uh, especially if they're going into partnership. And the other piece is if people go into partnership with a spouse or a relative, that's especially difficult. Okay. Because most of the time we have, you know, just having a partnership work in terms of uh, a marriage or something like that is tough. Yeah. Not alone, you add on doing business together. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so people be learning how to really communicate. I'm not saying it can't happen and that people can't be successful, but they need to be crystal clear in their communications and uh, getting their expe expectations out. Mm -hmm. So those are all very important things around partnerships and who you're doing business with. Yeah. And, uh, and people, you know, they're, if they are friends and they're partners, they oftentimes are uncomfortable about talking about uh, very important topics to yeah. you know, is how is this going to be? Then entrepreneurs often get in business because they're skilled at something and they're working in the business. They're doing it and they're very good at it. But then they want to grow the business. Yeah. Well, lots of times they don't know how to hire people to bring them on to grow their business. And that hiring process is really critical. Uh, I see so many people will bring somebody on and it's a mistake because they haven't been clear on who's, who do we need to hire? What, what qualities do they need to have? What expectations do they have? What expectations do we have of them? So there's a whole good process of of hiring people. How do we select them and know that uh, we're really going to be comfortable and they're going to work out well? So oftentimes we'll work with businesses about their hiring process because most people are not good at knowing how to hire people. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then the second thing is once you hire them, what do you do with them? And how do you orient them to the business 
and help them understand what their roles are going to be. Lots of times I see people come on and about the only orientation they've gotten is where is the bathroom? <laughs> That's about, you know, and, and then they wonder why they're not doing the job. Yeah. And um, I, I, I hear employers say, well, they should be able to, it's common sense. And I say, common sense is not very common. Mm -mm. And so oftentimes the employer does, knows how to do something, and, but they don't know how to break it down into all its procedures and aspects so somebody else can do it well. Got it. Okay. And so oftentimes, what are you done? It's so easy. But yeah, it's easy for them because they've been doing it for years, you know. Uh -huh. And uh, and it so the employer thinks, well, this this person doesn't really want to work, and the employee's thinking, what kind of jerk is this that I'm working for? <laughs> and um, then uh, so helping the employee learn to do it, and. Um, the employer oftentimes is, as he gets employees and could not, could not, doesn't have to be so involved in daily activities, he doesn't quite know what his job is. True. And so working on how he works on, on the business rather than in the business is very crucial. And I have a, a president of a, a company, not a huge company, they probably about under 10 million in sales. He's, you know, he's still driving a truck around to his different crews, delivering things. I said, you're doing that, that you can get at somebody for 15, $20 an hour to do that. But it's what he's familiar, what he's comfortable with. And he's not necessarily that comfortable in going out and meeting with the kind of people he should be meeting with to build his business further. And um, so it's uh, helping the, the entrepreneur move from being in the business to working on the business is a really crucial uh, thing for business success. Mm -hmm. And um, then another big thing that happens in business is there's often gossip. People will talk in business um, about somebody else in the business or whatever. And it ends up being very destructive to businesses. It, it really hurts relationships. Mm -hmm. And some people will gossip or whatever because they they're trying to make somebody else look bad or something like that. So I work with business about setting up principles of direct communication mm -hmm. so that if you're upset with somebody, you go to them with your upset to clear it. And you don't go to somebody else and gossip about them, mm -hmm. but it happens all the time. Have you ever seen that happen in business? Oh my goodness. I used to be a television reporter for, um, and I'll just say it, I don't care for this specific network for CBS. And there was, you know, someone in particular that was, I heard rumors they were talking about me and my work. And so I eventually just went over to confront them. They, you could tell kind of right away when someone's denying, I didn't say that. And I'm like, well, maybe it came out a certain way, but this has gotten back to me now more than one time. So let's just talk about it. If you think I'm not doing something up to par with how you would do them or what, explain it to me. You know what, you, you're more knowledgeable in this field. You know, tell me then, you know, you've been here longer than me. I don't mind. So it was awkward, but the awkwardness, um, I'm glad I finally confronted her, became better. And we worked it out and everything's fine. And now I, there's nothing bad to say about that person at all. But I was upset, but I'm glad we yes. communicated better about it. Yes. Right. Yeah. And you, and if people don't get that clear, you know, you can see how it would hurt an organization. Oh, absolutely. Right. And 
I don't know what it was like when you were growing up, Jill, but did you, did people? Oh, Bob, we just lost you. You're frozen. You said, do people, and you're still frozen. I'm so sorry. I don't know if you can hear me or see me, Bob, but you are frozen. I can hear you. Uh, there you go. You unfroze. So all I heard was, I want to know, you said about growing up, you don't know what it was like, uh, what it was like for me, and you you paused. So repeat the question. Well, did you was there indirect communication in your family? Would somebody gossip about somebody else? Yeah, because we learn that when we're growing up. Yes, horribly. My mom about my aunt, my aunt about my, yes, yes. Yeah, it's the drama triangle. Somebody's the persecutor, somebody's the victim, and somebody's the rescuer. Yeah. And it goes round and round and round. And nothing ever gets resolved about it. And it, I mean, if I'm talking to you about somebody else, it looks like I'm in positive relationship with you, but I'm really not. I'm in relationship with you about a gossip rather than us getting to know each other better. And one of the things that happens in businesses so much is this gossip. It's like throwing sand in the gears of business. And so I, I usually recommend to a business uh, to have the, uh, principle of direct communication. And then the rules from that is I don't gossip and I don't listen to gossip. If somebody comes to me about somebody else, I say, sounds like you have an issue with them. You can talk to me if you want to get clear so you can talk to them, but I don't want to hear gossip if you're not going to go talk to them. In fact, I'm going to let them know you have an issue you need to talk to them about. And it really starts clearing up yeah. And most of us have been raised in it. It's not like somebody's terrible, but, you know, to directly communicate, you know, like you're going to that woman and directly communicating her, you know, it could take, it could be upsetting yeah. to do that because you're, you're having to take a risk. How are they going to respond to it? Well, direct communication does, is, uh, uh, more stressful, but once we can do it, it really helps. Yeah, I agree. It's amazing not the uh, regular good old gossip. It cures in the workplace. You would think in a business establishment, things would be a lot more professional, but I'm sure you've been in situations where this has happened. Is it every place that you've worked or the people that you help out, you find this a lot? There's a lot of this kind of banter around the offices. Absolutely. Um, and, and it, it, uh, it's how they relate to each other mm -hmm. without truly being vulnerable with each other. Mm -hmm. You know, they do it at somebody else's expense. And some people actually do it as a strategy to undermine somebody else in order to be, beat them out or something like that. So, so but it, the indirect communication is, is really uh, difficult. Now, the other area, you know, I spoke a little bit about being able to tell an employee what to do, the ability to delegate things and break things down so that somebody else can do it is a real important skill. Mm -hmm. And it empowers people to um, come along and, and really develop in their, in their profession. Yeah. And good, good uh, employers, you know, are good instructors and support people in being uh, really getting good at, at understanding what are all the steps and procedures and then being able to perform them well. And employers knowing how to do that, uh, one, employees like working for them and they get great results from, from their employees then. And lots of people have trouble breaking that down. Yeah. And if, if they do, they should be asking somebody, help me break this down. What all am I doing? You know? And so 
Um, another thing that I've uh, also noticed a lot of time are um, I've run into a lot of uh, women, especially, but others, where they do a great job and then somebody takes credit for what they've done. Have you ever seen that? You know? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I just don't understand that. But yes, it has happened. I've seen that before for sure at another job of mine. Yeah. Well, and, and, and it, it's very disheartening, and oftentimes you lose people that way. So um, being able to give people credit and, and let them know you appreciate their work is really important. I had a, a while ago a story of a CEO of a business, and he was very egotistical. And in the structure of the business, his salespeople if they brought in lots of business, could make lots of money. And he had this one salesman who was doing great, ended up making more money than the CEO. Wow. And the CEO was upset because it was like, and he cut the guy's commission. Mm -hmm. So he couldn't make as much as the CEO. And do you know what happened? The guy left. And not only left, went to the guy, the competitor. Oh. And so this guy, out of, you know, his ego, hurt himself and his company big time. You know, rather than thinking, well, I hope he makes more money because that just brings more money into the business and will help me in terms of salary. His decision, I mean, some people make some pretty dumb strategic decisions in business that really hurt the business. So those are things that, um, the other thing is uh, like with COVID, it changed business. I'm sure it changed what you do, is that? Well, yeah, I mean, I was also working, it's funny because I was working part-time doing sales at a local hotel. And I was uh -huh. excited in my first like sales position because I've been in the television radio world for years and I kind of like this and, you know, I have kids. So it's a little, well, I got let go with COVID right after the first two months I started. And I said, now what am I going to do? Like, I just thought I was going down a different career path and I wanted to learn sales since communication is what I'm really good in, in a sense, but I haven't worked in there. So they were giving me an opportunity gone, but then I got this. So I'm happy to be doing the podcasts and some of the Zooms. So I'm, I'm very thankful. I love people, love talking to people and meeting people. But yeah, COVID affected, I mean, how many of us in business and places of employment? Yeah. And when, when it's unfamiliar, lots of people have trouble stepping into the unfamiliar. It scares them so much. Mm -hmm. So some people are actually prospering it with all of what happened with COVID and other people are, you know, really in bad shape. And so when there's changes, uh, companies need to be able to adapt. Yeah. And learning to go put a good plan together and go into the unfamiliar is very important to be able to do that. Yeah. And lots of people are afraid of it, they go away from it, and a lot of them get depressed and you know they you know they shut down when you know in a crisis, hey, there's usually lots of opportunities there also. Yeah. And in most crises is when the biggest innovations occur. Because we have to oh, we've been doing this this familiar but hey, we have to do something very different here. People working from home, one of the biggest things, doing these Zoom right. virtual calls became the thing of the, it just, it was uncommon, but still was done. But then everyone had to learn this virtual world, right? Right, absolutely. And just look at what Zoom did. I mean, you know, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like, you know, they took the opportunity and created a software that worked really pretty well for people. And you know, they're prospering during this time. So 
And a lot of times you'll see companies that are really on the cutting edge at their time, but then they get, it gets familiar and they, and, you know, so if you look at uh, Sears Roebuck and company, they were selling through catalogs all over the country. And they didn't just have to have stores. They, you know, people would get on their catalog and order and everything like that. Well, they could have become Amazon easily, yeah. but they didn't. And, and pretty soon you hardly ever saw the catalog and they didn't weren't doing much online and look at where Sears is now, you yeah. know, while well, Amazon's taken off. And so, so, you know, having innovation, being able to do new things is, is crucial. Okay. And, and, but anything like that scares us. Just don't let your fears stop you. Yeah. Fears are good guides for us. Bob, were you always doing these Zooms type of virtual conferences though, before COVID hit? So were you like a pioneer when it came to this or no? No, not me. I, I, <laughs> I had so many clients that I was seeing, uh, you know, there are a lot of things I wanted to get into yeah. and I didn't because Prior to COVID, uh, I had discovered how to treat post-traumatic stress with my biofeedback, uh -huh. and I was seeing 60 clients a week. Wow. Six days a week. I was like, COVID came, it, it sort of helped me, because now I, I only do about 35 to 40. Wow. So, and, uh, but I enjoy Zoom. I enjoy meet, I, I froze. I uh, can't hear you still. You're froze. I'm frozen. There you go. Go ahead. Yep. Repeat whatever you just said, because we didn't hear it. Well, I just said that um, I learned how to network on Zoom and everything. And I also, um, but getting back to some in-person networking was fun. I, I was at one yesterday and it was outdoors and sunny. It was great. So I like both. Good. It's good to have a little bit of both. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> but boy, yeah. boy, businesses had to change. And, um, you know, with your clients, what's the one thing that you've learned about, you know, from this past year with the, with the pandemic? Do you see things getting better for most businesses now? Or do you see permanent changes that you want to discuss? Well, I see a lot of, uh, I the businesses I've worked with, helping the, the, uh, owners and the people in the charge of it get clear on what they're doing has really helped them a lot. And sometimes I wonder, are you guys doing better? Cause you know, cause I hear about the problems. Yeah, yeah. So I have, I say, you have to check in with me, the progress you're making, you know, because that, they'll come in with the next problem they want to solve. I said, well, did you solve the ones before? <laughs> I, so, yes, yes, it's working a lot better. It's doing, so I say, good. I just need to know that I'm, I'm, I'm helping you be successful at what you're going for. Because sometimes they'll, they're leading with the problem. And I said, just, and then a uh, big thing is I really try and help people create a vision ahead of time what they want to create and and be able to step into it and step in it with enthusiasm i had a realtor re just recently that i was working with and she's very very talented very smart but if i if she was a horn i'd say it had a mute in it she you know she muted herself a lot and um, I said you need to let your aliveness come out you need to be playing with your clients and I said so I the success for that and she said well if I got a if I got an offer on one of the properties and if somebody chose to work with me as a realtor Bob, I lost you again. Sorry, Bob. Bob Kaufman, are you with us? 
and we are going to wrap it up, I think, because I don't hear you or see. Okay, can you hear me? There you go. Go ahead. Yes. Okay, so I was just saying this. We set the goals, and she wanted to have an offer, and she wanted somebody to choose her as a realtor. And I said, go fully into it. She called me later and said, I said, how's the day? Fantastic. I got four offers. I got two people wanting me as their realtor. And I, I said, did you have fun? She said, oh, I had a blast. So it was getting people to uh, see work as play you get paid for. Yeah. And you need to make it that way. So. And to tell us about uh, you, where we could find you, criticalthinkingforsuccess.com and how people can reach out to you with questions. You are an amazing problem solver, consultant, trainer, and so much more. So please. Well, it's Bob at Critical Thinking for Success is my, is my email. And my number, my cell number, I'll be happy to have people call me on is 847-845-0422. You know, be happy to talk to them. Great. Well, thank you so much, Bob. It's always a pleasure seeing you, getting to speak with Good you. Good seeing you. You're a great person, and I'm so glad we get to, to meet once a week like this. Thank Thanks. you for your help and what you do. Criticalthinkingforsuccess.com. Bob Coffin, you have a great day, and everyone else the same. Stay tuned. More of the show is coming right up after the break. Please don't go anywhere. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house. And there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's it's going to be okay.